Hey, it's Ken Dunn, and we're back again. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to be here with you guys today. I'm at the Lake St. Peter Resort. This is a major cottage resort construction project that we have going on in our company right now. And I want to sit here and spend some time with you and tell you, explain to you the three biggest mistakes that I believe investors make when they're doing any type of improvement project at a property. These mistakes cost them money, they cost them time, and they definitely cost them profits. And I'm going to get into it right after this. Hey, my name's Ken Dunn, and I'm a real estate investor. I want to welcome you to the No Money Real Estate Podcast. On this show, I'm going to interview elite-level real estate investors from all over North America. And I'm going to help you to see one thing that all successful real estate investors have in common. They built their portfolios without using a dime of their own money. I've got a portfolio of $300 million in real estate. That includes resorts, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, and I built the entire portfolio without using a dime of my own money. Real estate is a business that anybody can get into, but the strategies that those Titan real estate investors use to build massive portfolios have been kept secret for decades. Now, because of this show, I'm gonna reveal them to you. So let's get started. All right, so like I was telling you guys, I'm actually at the Lake St. Peter Resort here in Lake St. Peter, Ontario. It's about 25 minutes north of Bancroft. And this is a property that I bought for $2 million a year and a half ago. Let's just pan around quickly and you can see what's actually happening here right now. Uh, today, we're actually going to be demolishing the five existing cottages on the property. We've got construction equipment coming in right now and we've got a crew. The, they're building all the cottages off site and they're bringing everything here to the property to build. And that's what you see going on over there. But I had some time that I wanted to spend here with you right now. And I want to talk to you about this stuff that I've seen in most real, most new real estate investors are doing this. And this costs tons and tons of money. And it's really about managing projects. Listen, one of the biggest secrets that anybody that's doing real estate investing has to learn is how to increase value. It doesn't matter what type of real estate investing you're doing. If you're going to win and make the most money, there's some fundamentals that you need to keep in mind as you're doing deals, right? Number one, you want to make sure that you're buying the property below value. Do not buy a property for any type of real estate investing at fair market value. If you keep looking, you're going to find properties that are below value and that you can improve the value. If you're doing multifamily real estate projects, you're going to improve the value by doing renovations on the property, increasing the rent rolls. If you're doing something like I'm doing in the resort space, I'm going to buy an old dilapidated resort where the cottages need to be rebuilt and I'm going to get a significant discount because I'm buying a piece of junk. Then I'm going to literally put together a plan to radically build a whole new property, all new buildings, hire a team, run a resort, make lots of money, and it increases the value. So this property here, listen carefully to this. We bought it for $2 million. We're investing $7 million in the project. When it's finished, it's going to be worth $18 million. Now, it doesn't matter if you're doing an enterprise size deal like I just described to you, or what if you're doing a flip? If you're doing a flip, a good example, buy a house for 200,000 that's under value, that's literally falling apart, put 200 into it to rebuild it, then sell it for 800,000. So what do you see in common with all those things? Obviously, you got to find a property below value. You got to figure out how to raise the money to acquire the property. Uh, and those things you can learn all about in other shows. Just subscribe to the podcast or subscribe to the YouTube channel and get in the habit of watching these shows and you're going to learn a lot. But what I want to talk about today really is what happens after you get the property under contract. What, what are the big mistakes that people make or what should you do? If you want to maximize your exit, in other words, if you want to maximize the amount of money you make when you do a deal, that's what I want to talk to you about right now. And there's really three major things that if you can correct your own behavior in these three categories, you're going to absolutely kill it. You're going to make so much more money and have so much more profit. Number one, get everything completely organized before you close. Listen, in our country, if you're doing real estate deals, there's going to be a period of time between when you get the property under contract and when you close the property. Now, it, how long that period of time is, is really going to depend on what kind of market we're actually in. If you're in a hot market where everything's being bought really quickly and you find a deal that's priced right, your closing is going to have to be really short and you're going to have to 
make sure that you have as few conditions as possible. The market we're in right now is a balanced market. So I'm, I'm putting like 60 to 90 day closings on everything that I, I do. Because I have that time in my contract, I'm going to have a condition that says between the day we agree and the day we close, I want open access to the property. I want to be able to take people into it. I want to be able to go there as often as I need to, giving, of course, the appropriate notice and never more than once a week is what I say. That's a strong condition in my contract. Why? It's because in every case of any type of property I'm doing, I want to develop it. I want to make it better than it currently is. And I don't do the work myself. Just like you see here at Lake St. Peter right now, I'm hanging out by the fire with you. Those guys are doing the work. But the way, the reason this works so well is in that period of time between contract and closing, I had these companies out. I got quotes from them. I got the lowest price and I had them ready. And I said, this place is closing on January 3rd. You you have to be ready to start on January 3rd. So the day we closed, they're working. It makes the whole deal move faster. So many new real estate investors, they're so excited to be buying a property that they get that property under contract. They tell all their friends about it. They struggle raising money. And now the place is closed and they haven't even started putting together their plan for construction. You do that the right way, you're going to save tons of money. Number two, if you're going to be in real estate investing, one of the things that I teach my students is that you, you have to know everything that's going on in a project. You can't do this well. You can't know if you're getting a good job or not unless you actually understand what those guys are doing and you understand the price related to them and you understand how fast things move. Now, what do you think is the easiest way for you to learn how to do that stuff? get in there and do it. When I first started in real estate investing, I literally worked alongside of the contractors. I literally hired contractors and you might want to try this. If you're doing a little house flip, hire a contractor that's willing to let you be on site and show you what they're doing as they're doing it. So you can learn. When I started getting into it, the other thing I started doing is I would meet with the contractors and I would get two prices. I would say, I want a price for you doing demolition and everything. And I want a second price if I do demolition myself and I re remove all the waste. And now most of my projects I do, not big resorts like this, but when I'm doing house flips, all the day it closes, there'll be a bin on site. I'll figure out how long it's going to take me to do all the demolition myself. And I'll go in there with a sawzall and a sledgehammer and some other tools. And I'll do all the demolition myself. It normally saves me between 10 and $20,000 on a single flip. That's an extra 15 to 20% profit because I do all that demolition myself. And here's the third thing, the third mistake that new people make. Start selling the property the day you acquire it. Now, this is one of the things that I do that I don't think a lot of other real estate investors do because they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to to, uh, pull this off. But whenever I'm doing a flip, I start marketing the flip for sale the day I buy it. I start running Facebook ads, 10 bucks a day, 15 bucks a day to a landing page where I explain what the house is, where it is. I show them the directions and then I tell them what we're planning to do and improve it. And then I give them a link to send me an email if they're interested in buying the property. I tell them what I'm going to want for it when it's finished. But the allure, what I do with them that nobody else does, I say, if you buy this place while we're in construction, you get to decide what your kitchen looks like, what your living room looks like. You get to decide all of the finished treatments in the house so it can be more like your own home. So I pre-sale my flips. I pre-sell my flips starting on the day I acquire the property. If you do these three simple things, you're going to make 20 to 30% more money. You're going to save time and you're going to become an expert in every aspect of real estate investing. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed this chat we had today, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Put any comments, any questions you have about what I talked about in the chat here below. If you're listening to this on the podcast, please subscribe to the podcast and give us a five-star review. All your love helps us to get these shows out to more people. We'll see you on the next show.